Hi everybody, Pat Huntoon here from Technique Junkies, and today I'm here to introduce you to our new foil line, and I'm going to show you how you don't need a laminator to use foils, which is kind of fun and easy. So today I'm going to be showing you our new line, and I'm going to be showing you how to use stencils without a laminator, just using a big shot and a product called ThermaWeb Duo. Roll into the actual technique. I'm going to show you the colors of foils that we're starting out with. So I want to show you our fun new colors, tell you a little bit about the size of them, and then I will show you the whole technique. These are the new colors in the Technique Junkies foil line. Each of these rolls is 4 inches by 25 feet. Not 25 inches, 25 feet. So to put that in perspective for you, this row will actually get you 50 card backgrounds. 50, five zero. So this one row has 25 feet on it. And assuming you have some waste there, you're gonna get 50 backgrounds out of this. So let me show you the colors. First, we have this gorgeous silver, a royal blue, teal, this lovely, lovely purple, Gold, red, lime green, or spring green as we're calling it, rainbow, rose gold. Oh, this is just so beautiful. And my beautiful raspberry pink. So those are the colors that we're offering in the initial offering. And as we go forward, we'll be adding more colors. So that is, those are the rolls. So for the technique part of this, I mentioned that we can use uh, stencils and a transfer gel um, and actually use either a laminator or just use a regular um, big shot. So what I'm going to do is show you that right now. I'm gonna, going to show you how we put it on and then I've done a couple so that we can, you don't have to watch me do these too, but I'm going to show you some tricks, okay? So this is made by ThermaWeb. It's Deco Foil Transfer Gel Duo, and it'll, the duo part of it is two-way use, heat or no heat. So this is kind of revolutionary in that you don't have to have a laminator in order to use foil. So let me show that you how that's done. So first of all, I mentioned that I did this on white and I did this on black, um, and these are all dried and all of that. So what I want to show you is that you can even expand this further. So I'm actually going to spray on the background of this so that you can see that you can spray over it and you'll get fabulous results. So I'm going to take a paper towel here and put it underneath here and then I'm just going to add some spray to this. So I'm going to shimmer these backgrounds. I'm going to be using two colors of the Technique Chunky Shimmering Bliss Spray, Ocean Depth, which is a light blue, and Dolphin Cove, which is a little bit darker blue. So I'm gonna be using those two blue colors on there. So anytime you use these sprays, of course, you have to mix them. I roll them so that we can move the mica off the bottom. And then I'm just gonna real quickly, just kinda of put half and half. I can just kind of cover that up a little bit. This part doesn't have to be perfect. I kind of spritz that a little bit too much, but I'm just going to tap some of this off now. So here's the real beauty of this. I do not need to dry this. You can see it's pretty wet. I soaked it through on certain parts. I don't have to dry this. But I am going to take this Zinnia here on the Zinnia set from A Colorful Life Designs, and I am going to put it over this. Now, I do need to mention... As much as I love ThermaWeb's Pixie Spray, I'm not using it in this instance because I'm going to be washing off this stencil as soon as I use it, um, either with a baby wipe, a wet cloth is fine. I've been using um, a cloth, a damp cloth, or uh, running it under water. You do need to get this transfer gel off. It is an adhesive type of product. So I'm just using washi tape here. You can use painter's tape if you don't wanna use up your washi tape. So I'm just gonna get this down nice and firm. Then I'm gonna take the transfer gel and you can see, I've been using it quite a bit, I love this. And then we're just gonna spread it on there. I'm gonna take this fancy spreader because I haven't used this one yet and just put a bunch down, it's about a quarter size. You can also put it back in the jar if you need to. And you just wanna spread that nice and evenly over that. Just nice and even. I wanna make sure that I don't see like those kind of holes. I don't wanna spread it out of the holes so I'm going slower. I usually don't have this much patience, so we're getting some patience out of me here. So I'm gonna take my spreader and my stencil. 
Okay, so I should also mention that when you are using uh, when you're using foils on things like uh, toner, a lot of times you want the sentiment to be perfect. This sometimes can be a little imperfect, so it is not. It, you have to think about it in in that it's a little more grungy looking, just a tiny bit. Um, you can get perfect. Trust me, I've done a lot of perfect pieces, but you can also have a little grunginess depending on how well you do it. So that's our piece. And you have two choices here. The bottle says that you can uh, let this sit for about an hour that would take to dry. But since I never have an extra hour, I'm going to dry this with a heat tool. And I have checked with ThermoWeb and it's just fine. It doesn't affect the product. So let me heat that for you real quick and I'll be right back. So I've heated this, and if you notice when we started, it was white. You want to make sure that you move your heat tool around a lot, and you don't really want to get too much, too many bubbles on there. If you get bubbles, and I have some of this as bubbles, you can see, that will have more of a texture to it than some of the non-bubble. And I also find that foils, using the deco gel, you get you get texture with the with the stencils and the foil and the deco gel. It's it's absolutely amazing. Where sometimes, not sometimes, but when you use a toner application for heat transfer gel uh, and heat transfer foils, you don't get quite as much dimension, and you get some beautiful dimension on these. So I'm going to show you first using the one we've done using the Big Shot. So here's my Big Shot. Um, a couple of things that I want to mention about the Big Shot is that when you use it, whatever you have on top has to be uh, not cut into. If you have cuts in yours, like we all do, all you're going to do is take a thicker piece of paper, you're going to put it on top of your piece and use that as part of your sandwich. So this will go against a cut if you have cut a, a cut in your uh, die cut plates. So once you have your piece, like I have here, you cut a piece of foil. A little bit just a tiny bit larger than you need oh I probably miscut that one which I probably I did I miscut it a little bit so if that's okay let me show you what you do when you miscut like that when you miscut like that just cut a little bit extra is, so I'm cutting a little extra foil here a little extra foil piece and you can overlap them like that foil always goes up you always want it to be up because um, you want to look at the pretty colors. The pretty colors are what you're you're trying to get here. So, so I like to I like to use this on tab one with a C plate on the bottom. The C plate has cuts in it, so I am not um, using that on top. And then I'm going to put a B plate without cuts on the top, and I'm going to run that through. And I always run everything through me twice, no matter what I do. So the pressure from the Big Shot will push that down into the thing. Now, if you feel that you don't have any resistance, put a piece of paper on top of that. See, that's a little tighter. What you want to do is use the pressure, same as if you were doing an embossing folder or a die, or you, the same rules apply, okay? You want to get the pressure there. So I'm just going to pull this off the plate. Let me move this out of the way. All my things here. And now to reveal it. So I'm just going to use a little burnishing here. And remember that part of this is not attached. So you see I only use this portion. This was the part that I uh, was short on. I would hold on to this and use that again. And then I'm just going to burnish this with my fingers. Just make sure that it's in there all the way. This is not something they tell you you have to do. It's just my way of doing it. And then I'm going to pull this off. So you can see. Now, this foil that I have here, this is graphics quality heat transfer foil. So it is a little overkill when you're using the transfer gel with a big shot, but it's nice and thick and it does apply very nicely. So look at how beautiful that is, isn't that gorgeous? But see, remember how I told you the bubble is, you can kind of see the texture there. So that's that way. Let me take you over to the laminator and I will throw the other two through the laminator and you can see what that looks like. Okay, so I already, I'm going to use purple on these and I, I already cut it and I cut it just a tiny bit short. So let me show you what I should have done. Let's take a piece of foil, turn it upside down on the project and then kind of rough cut around the project. And this piece was cut off from the four inches by 25 foot roll. So what I'm going to do is I have um, a mink here a lamp mink laminator. And I'm just going to take both of these pieces because I can, they both fit in here and put them inside of this, just copy paper, plain old copy paper. And then I'm gonna run it through the laminator. I have my mink set to five because this is 
graphics quality heat transfer foil. So if you're going to run it through, run it through right. I'm just going to put it right into the, the mink. And it's pulling it through. I like the mink machine. It heats up very quickly and it has an appropriate amount of heat. Um, some of the uh, machines that you see out there, especially the cheap ones, just don't get hot enough um, if you're going to be using this method. Also, having a laminator allows you to use the same foil using toner things, things that are tonered. So, as this comes out, um, there's the sheet. I'm not going to put this through twice this time. This one time. So, let me do a reveal here. Let me pull this back a little bit so you can see. And all I'm going to do is, again, I'm a burnisher. So I like to burnish just a little bit, make sure we get all the nooks and crannies there. And look at that on black. Is that not, that's just beautiful. And you notice, I let this one air dry and you notice you don't see any uh, little bubbles there. But isn't that beautiful? So that's one. And here's the white piece. Again, I'm just gonna push this down with my fingers. And then I'm going to peel this off. Oh, and look at that. Look at how beautiful it is. It's just gorgeous. So that is how you use the transfer heat transfer foils offered by Technique Junkies along with uh, both a Big Shot and with, um, and with a uh, laminating machine. So that's the end of our video today. I hope you've enjoyed watching how you can use our graphics quality heat transfer foil both with and without heat with a stencil and with the thermoweb duo product it's really really cool so thanks for joining me i hope to see you next time